This is a, a quick product overview from Fluidic Limited of the new SLA Safety Logic Alarm from Moore Industries. This is a multi loop, multi function safety logic solver. Um, so, to go back, take a step back, we also have more traditional single loop um, trip amplifiers here the STA and the ATX qualified SPA2. Um, so the STA can take a single 4020 or RTD, something like that, and you can configure high and low trips from that. Um, and rather than a traditional control trip amplifier, this is a SIL2 qualified bit of kit, qualified by TUV for a functional safety application. So it's been through mean time between failure testing and rigorous tests to make sure that it always fails in the safe condition and it's suitable for safety applications such as shutdown systems, and maybe fire water sprinkler systems, that kind of thing. The difference between that and the SLA is that this is multi-loop. So we have three dual channel, so six analog inputs effectively, discrete input output which is configurable, uh, four relays, four anal uh, three analog outputs and mod bus interface as well. This is all configurable by free of charge vendor neutral pactware which is used in a lot of heart systems. Um, I'm going to run through that in a wee second. Off the bat, now I have this connected via Ethernet to my PC and as you can see if I go through this program here if I go into what's under Modbus I've given it IP address 192.168.1.111 um, there's a free of charge bit of software from Moore to configure that it's very simple very straightforward probably a different video if I go to any internet browser, so if I just open up Chrome for example, and I, I type up the top here, one handed, I'll hold, hold my camera, one six say, there we go, I've been into it before, I get a read only configuration page and I'll show you how it's been set up and I can get some event logs on the left hand side, process data, things like that that's been put in, how it's running just now, if I made a change and done a, a refresh that, for example, analog input 1A is showing 8.8 .8 milliamps, 8.8 .8 milliamps, if I go to my little demo port here and turn that to, what's that, 9.1, between 9.1 and 9.2, do a quick refresh, we're looking here, 9.15, there we go. So this will give you a full configuration. Um, to configure this, which I've done myself, it's not difficult. Um, this is how I've configured it. So you have up to 16 soft alarms, so it's configured. Um, and from those soft alarms, you can configure relay outputs, but that might not necessarily be as simple as a high or a low. Um, that could be a voting system. You could have one out of three or two out of three voting on multiple analog inputs. Um, so we have, I've done it here, I've put very simple low, high, low, high alarms. Um, so I've done 11, I've done the same, but I've put a five second delay on it. I've put an alarm just to show something different if analog 1A is higher than analog 1B. Analog input 1A and analog input 1B. Um, and the relays I've configured from this would be A1 or A2 on one. So if it was high or low, I'll get an alarm. I've done a manual reset on that and I've latched it using the discrete input one. Um, at the top, I've got my discrete input one. So we said analog input one A, low or high. So let's turn it and again, <clears throat> low I have set. 8 milliamps high above 16. Very simple. Let's we'll take that slow. There we go. 7.63. 
and I've got a trip one and a trip two, which happened five seconds later. But I've latched them. So if I now take that back up above eight, it won't reset. But I configured the screen input one as a reset. There we go. Doddle. Two out of three voting we've got on relay four, which is two analog A, sorry, A2, A4, A6, which is analog input 1A, 1B, or 2A, all high. You can see I've got that as 2 out of 3. So if 1 goes above 16, Now, incidentally, I've got trip 3 come on, so what's happened there? Trip 3 is A12, which tells me if analog input 1A is higher than analog input 1B, which it is, and that's why trip 3's come on, but I'll keep going. So we're above 16. So trip 1 latched, so we've got a high alarm. But trip 4. Is a two or three voting? I still know when, even though one is because I've got two out of three. So let's take analog input one B. And trip four's went. Let's bring them back down. And it's came off as soon as we're only down to one out of three. We need two out of three. And we're back down to a stable condition, but again, I've still got an alarm on trip one, which, if you remember, was the last one. And we're back to start. So, how to configure this now? Um, Packware, and I have previously set this up. I'm not going to go through the details of running Pactware. Um, again, that's another video and there's plenty out there. But let's, let's connect all of these devices. And let's go into load from device. Configuration summary. That will show you everything that I've got set up there. But just very quickly, analog inputs, analog input one. How easy that is to see. I've got that. Although I've configured it as milliamps, and I've said it's milliamps, I've actually done its resistance with a sensor type 4000 ohms and told it to output. 40, 20 milliamps. Can't really see. There we go. And that's 1A and 1B because they're dual channel. <coughs> and again, just back to my URS if you want. I'm like 1A would be 0 to 4000 scaled 40, 20 milliamps. This software is very easy to use. Um, I want to configure analog input 2, A and B, go in there, change it. My alarms, there's a summary of the alarms, process alarms. Alarm 1, well I had alarm 1 as analog input 1A is low. So I've got it as a low alarm, I've done a trip point at 8 milliamps, it could be anything but I've called it 8. And that's now looking up the scaling for the analog input, which although was 0 to 4000 ohms, we scaled that for... 40 20 milliamps. On the top, I can go to relays. And here you can see the voting. So I've got one out of two on this one because it was if the analog input 1A was low or high. And then I configured the alarm one to be low and alarm two to be high. There really is a ton of functionality with the Moore SLA, eh, much more than I can put into a reasonable size video. I didn't mention there's a, a heart pass-through 
Um, so if you had a, a heart qualified transmitter, for example, a Honeywell um, STG 700, maybe you're using that on a hip system, maybe you had three on a hip system, you could take the 4 to 20 through the SLA, you could use the voting of the SLA for your safety system and you could pass the heart through to your process control system. You wouldn't use heart on the safety side. Um, if anyone would like a face-to-face -face demonstration or discussion on this, please give us a call. Um, we represent Moor in Scotland. We also have a Warrington office as well. My, my colleagues can visit you there. We do a lot of Moor in the nuclear industry from Warrington. Um, I will put a full description of the product on our website with a link in the description below.